Hey, just a warning, while Fuller House is a family show, the Fullest House podcast is not. Listener discretion is advised. Hello, world. I'm Mark Green. Hello, world. I'm Harrison Bloom. Hello, world. I'm Zach Horowitz. Nice to meet you. Uh, we are the Fullest House podcast, and today we are watching season five, episode five of Boy Meets World, The Witches of Pembroke. Oh, boy. Yes. And a show that none of us have watched, except for yes. Mark. A little Harrison bit. and I have not seen this. Mark, this was Mark's idea, so I'm going to let him explain why we're doing this episode specifically. I had seen I'd seen clips of Boy Meets World because my brain is broken, and I was just going on a rabbit hole of watching Girl Meets World clips, probably because of my same fascination with Fuller House, this weird sequel show. Um, mm-hmm. But I found out that there's an episode of Boy Meets World guest starring Fuller House's own Candace Cameron Bure. And we watched it. It's this episode. Yes. DJ's in this episode. I looked in her (laughs) palest in this episode. She's very pale in this episode. That's true. I wonder if there's a reason why. (laughs) Well, I guess we'll I guess we'll find out when we dive into the Witches of Pembroke. The Witches of Pembroke. Of Boy Meets World. I I wanna say right away this episode was working for me. Um my because I love this interstitial music that they used. It opens with an establishing shot of an apartment building and there's music playing and all of the interstitials in this show are this weird combination of like Seinfeld and friends where it's the establishing shots of Seinfeld sometimes like almost literally, (laughs) but the music from friends (laughs) and it's immediately it started playing. I'm like, Oh, this is the kind of thing I love. This is so, this is for me. It's amazing that it took you this long to find this show, Mark. Yeah. Uh, Though you did know more about it than I did. (laughs) Yeah. But we open up with roommates Eric Matthews and Jack Hunter. Um, And guys, they're going to the club. Going to the club. (laughs) Is that what people do in clubs? Uh, yeah, they do that. They do exactly what you just did. Yes. There's no there's no music or anything. People, we make our own music in life. <laughs> the I'd real say. party was the friends we made along the way. Yes. But yeah, they're going on their way to the club. And and we establish that Jack is is new in town. He doesn't really know anybody or know anything. And that's important in this episode. Just that Eric is more established and more confident, and Jack doesn't really know anybody, except for Eric. Mm-hmm. But they're the best of friends. Yeah. Yes. So they go out and, oh, wait, before Eric gives uh, some very, very good dating advice. Yes. Some, some very good dating advice of walk as close to the person as possible <laughs> and stare into their soul with the creepiest smile you could imagine. I mean, it works every time, obviously. Yeah. I mean, look, from my experience, I mean, maybe Harrison is... The best answer to this That's how you met your girlfriend. Yeah, I was going to say, that's how you met your girlfriend, right? Is you just stared at each other, and then eventually you were like, so we're dating now. Yeah, much like in a young adult novel, when characters will just stare at each other across the room, brooding for like 30 minutes. It's like a weird mix of Cupid and Medusa. <laughs> Cupid and like you, Cupid. You extended. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Love that guy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's great. <laughs> it really is. You do point that out. If we are to trust YA, a lot of relationships is just staring. Yeah, that's right. That's, that is the most solid foundation to any human bond. Well, yeah, I mean, everyone knows that if two human beings make eye contact for at least 10 seconds without breaking, they are legally required to start dating. Yeah. Yep. You're legally married. Yeah. Yeah. That's how it works. Um, It's a real problem. I've been in a lot of like staring contests and we forget. Um, And then it's just this whole thing. Yeah. How many times have you been divorced, Mark? 17 times. Wow. Damn. Wow. It's a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot. That is a lot. 
That is a lot. You know, most people would say like three is a lot, but you know, I say that's amateur numbers compared to 17. <laughs> Your alimony must be awful. Ross Geller got nothing on this guy. <laughs> <laughs> Jack does ask, what are you doing? And I just wanted to point out, Eric explains this action as, I'm loving you with my eyes. Which is, oof. <laughs> ooh. Uh, that, that's definitely a choice of words. Yep. Yeah. But they, they leave their apartment for the club. Um, yes. And they immediately run into our guest star, Candace Cameron Bure. Yeah. Yes. And Eric tries his move. <laughs> And uh, she tells him, you're the reason they have campus escorts. Because, yes, he is, <laughs> as he points out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah he, he points it out with this. He, he agrees with this very like, ah, yes. So my reputation proceeds. Yeah, he's me. very proud of himself. He's very proud of the fact that he is considered a danger to society. Well, he's famous <laughs> is the thing. That's fair. You know, like, got to be up there with the greats. The most charming individuals, Ted Bundy, um, all the other serial killers people are OJ. attracted to. To be fair, to be fair, Ted Bundy and OJ Simpson were both very charming. They were. A lot of people found them hot. <laughs> it's really the, weird. Very char- They were both very charming, and that was a big problem <laughs> Yeah, for a lot of people. <laughs> a yes. big problem. <laughs> you, could, you could say it was the biggest problem for some of these people. <laughs> yes. You gotta love the 90s when you could just be like, yes, you're creeping. You're very, very creepy. And I and he's just like, yep, I will do nothing about that. <laughs> well, they, they also they, they point out with Eric, at least, you know, Jack, Eric says, like, this is what works for women. And Jack says, like, then why don't you have a girlfriend? And Eric goes, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that was good. That was a good joke. It's very oh, good. Yeah. The writing is super tight in this. It's really. <laughs> it's very tight. Tyler yeah. pointed out almost. Like almost immediately, we got two seconds in, and he said, "Like, oh, this is a really tight show. You can you can see why this was successful." Yeah, yeah. It's it's also a very fast paced episode. Where it's like really weird going from Fuller House to this. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Fuller House, where nothing happens. Ever. It's also really weird seeing things that are set up that are actually that actually have a payoff. Yes. <laughs> yes. Very weird. Like I thought about this because I was like watching a, friend, a movie with friends. I, I almost said watching a friends with movie, watching a movie with friends last night completely separately. Uh, and I was like, oh, yeah, there are things in this movie that were set up and then paid off. I forgot what this feels like. <laughs> Fuller House <laughs> broke your brain. Yes. Yeah. I'm so used to random details just being brought up and then never mentioned again. Like yeah. if the room was a TV show. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And everybody likes DJ. She's so nice and good at everything. And I love Steve so much. <laughs> <laughs> I love Steve so uh, much. I just, I want, I want DJ to walk in. You look are at tearing Steve. me apart, Matt. I, I want DJ to walk in, look at Steve and go, hey, babe. <laughs> <laughs> I got something for no, you. A, an episode of Fuller House. But DJ, they take out Candace Cameron Bure. Candace Cameron Bure's understudy is Tommy Wiseau. Yeah. It's a normal episode of Four yeah. House, except DJ is played by Tommy Wiseau. Yep. Mm-hmm. Oh, so, so creepy. That would be so creepy. It would be creepy, but in like a fun way, kind of like our boy Eric Matthews. Uh, <laughs> That's see, true. Back to the episode. I did a transition. Fantastic it's been transition. A while. Fantastic transition. Um, but you know, we were talking about everything. This show really moves. It's really fast paced. It's very fast paced. Yeah. Candace Cameron Bure, or as I put down in my notes, CCB, not to be CCB. confused with CBB, <laughs> Chad Brock Bradley. <laughs> that's, oh, that is a very good point. You said that and I was like, wait, Chad Brad Bradley? No, that's CBB. Well, I, I, supposed to CCB. I had the same thing. I wrote it down in my notes and went, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> You said that and immediately, like, my first thought was like, oh, yeah, Chad Brad Bradley. Wait a minute, Chad Brad Bradley's not in this episode. Oh, my God. Like, my mind just kind of, like, clicked, and I was like, wait, no. <laughs> it's a different CBB. Different C- CCB introduces herself as Millie. She's new to the building, and she immediately comes on to Jack. Yeah. I also, she immediately knows, like, his full name. She's like, oh, you must be Jack Hunter. I know, I know who you are because, yes. you know... I, I like to know who my roommates are, and I've been watching you. Eric is famous for the being the reason they have campus escorts. <laughs> Jack is famous for other reasons. 
I Jack assume. is famous for being the roommate of the guy who was responsible for campus escorts. <laughs> yep. Maybe that's why neither of them get dates. Everybody's afraid of Eric. And... You know, Jack really is the Scotty Pippen to Eric's Michael Jordan. <laughs> this is true. This is true. But she immediately says, oh, show me your apartment. And they go into the apartment together and the audience goes, Ooh. Ooh. which... Speaking of the differences between this show and Fuller House, having a strong audience reaction that was 100% justified yeah. was so weird. I was like, yeah, this is a woo line. It's really weird to like watch Fuller House and then watch like another show. Yep. <laughs> watch a show that was competently put together. And this episode is insane. We will yeah, get to yeah. what's we super will, oh, insane yeah. about this oh, episode. It's, it's very insane. But it's like a real show. <laughs> yeah. It's controlled chaos. Yeah. Anyway, we cut to a later time. Or yeah, we cut to later. Eric walks in. Nobody's home. He immediately says, goodbye, pants, and takes off his pants. Yeah. Like, literally, I just want to point out, like, they go in. Eric is getting in the elevator. The door closed on him. He's like, wait, what the? F-? He's, like, yelling as the door closes on him. Comes back inside, like, possibly, like, an hour or so later, an hour or mm-hmm. two later immediately takes off his pants very and, good uh, what should be happening on their apartment's balcony but uh you know jack and millie they're uh you know they're, they're doing some smooching at it. they're doing some smooching they're doing some yeah. smooching once again candace kim and beret ccb is once again irresistible yeah in any tv show <laughs> yep there was at one point in this episode you referred to her as DJ, and for whatever reason that made me laugh so much. Yeah, I was literally I was like, I just referred to her as DJ because I'm just like so used to referring yeah. to this woman as DJ. But I, I, I it was also part of his jokes. I'm like, oh, it's not DJ, but it is. Yeah. But um, Jack, Jack comes out and says to Eric, like, hey, uh, M- Millie's here, and Eric goes, oh, I'll say hi, and he goes out on the balcony. Still, Still not pants. wearing pants. He's got like nice oh, little God. smiley face boxers on. It's very good. Which I just want to say, I know we're not as used to this show. Like, how are we feeling about all the characters? Oh, I know I we have them. met three so far. <laughs> I fucking love them. I also love how we, we got to this point and I had knew like some things about Boy Meets World. Mm-hmm. And you like confirmed it like, like uh, you know, five minutes in or whatever, like a couple scenes in. And he's like, by the way. None of these are the main characters of the show. <laughs> yeah, we spend a long time with just these characters. And I did have to pause and go like, these aren't the main characters of the show. Yeah. These are, these are side characters. are the side characters. Which I love. It's great. Yeah, it's awesome. Fuller House should learn from this and have more episodes on their fun side characters. And Eric, Eric Matthews is the best. I like a big idiot. I'm a big <laughs> fan of, of dummies. In TV yeah. shows? Well, yeah, I mean, I feel like this is evident from any episode of Fullest House where we can be seen oh, yeah. loving our sad boy, Jay Money. Jay Money, yep, very much so. I just mean, like, my favorites are always, like, I like Coach and Woody on Cheers and Troy and Community. I like a oh, dummy. Yeah. I, I like a dummy. <laughs> I like a dummy, and Eric Matthews is a very good dummy. Yeah, I mean, like, even in, like, Fuller House, we got, like, Jay Money, we yep. got Jimmy Fernando, Gibbler, we got Fernando. We got, yep. We got Steve. There's a lot of dummies. The rule holds. The rule applies. Um, But we have maybe our first turn in the episode um, where Eric goes to, like, say hi to Millie. And Millie immediately turns on him and says, it's very important to me to have Jack. <laughs> Don't get in my way. Dun, Guys. Dun, dun. Is DJ evil? DJ maybe is the villain of this episode. Oh, no. no. America's sweetheart, DJ Tanner slash Fuller. I know. Is evil? Yep. She's she's very she's a very possessive girlfriend. And that's all we know up to this point. Wait, Mark, are you telling me right now? OK, hold on. Are you going to say that DJ is actually a vampire? <laughs> yeah. I mean, she does suck the life out of her boyfriend. Hey. Ooh. Women, am I right? God damn it, Harrison. <laughs> uh, <laughs> suck, yep. She's, 
Uh. <laughs> um, she also says to Jack, um, I think this is the next scene. Yeah, Jack and Eric are uh, stretching. They're getting ready for a run. Not just any run. They're doing the run from Rocky, I yep. believe. They're going up the stairs. They're going up the stairs. They've been preparing. Putting their hands in the air like Stallone. They've been, they say they've been stretching for this for months, which I really liked. <laughs> yes. They've been preparing. That's the only way they've been preparing. They haven't done any running, yeah. just stretching. No. <laughs> they've, yep. prepared, they've been preparing real hard to run up like two flights of stairs. Yeah. Yeah. Which, which like, you know, if you were preparing, like, that's what I would do. What would you, like, what, if you were preparing for this kind of run, it's like um, stretching, sitting on the couch to like get familiar with the couch so that running feels that much more sweet. Mm-hmm. Um, like, like, what would you do to prepare for this sort of task? Well, I mean, as we all know, this is a very dangerous task that requires yep. a lot of preparation. Yep. So, so I think carry what a I would knife. Do, carry a knife, yes. But I was also thinking just, you know, write letters to my friends and family <laughs> just for, as a precaution. Just in case we don't yeah. make it to the top. Mm. Just a precaution. the The whole point of it is that we we don't want we don't want to have to use them, but in case we do. Actually, actually, Zach, I was preparing for a run. I actually have a letter I wrote to you. If you want to. Oh, yeah. perfect. Okay, gotta, are you gonna read it? <laughs> yep, gotta put on my reading glasses. Uh huh. Dearest Zachary. <laughs> I regret to inform you that I will be going on a short run. No. I know not if I will return. Oh, no. He's a madman. He's going to get himself killed. Think of the children. The nights will be long and the days longer, though not quite as long as some of the At nights. At least take a tin of whale fat to keep yourself fueled. Man, I really hope he's carrying a knife. I am bringing with me only the clothes on my back and a tin of whale fat. Oh, thank which... God. <laughs> he forgot the knife. <laughs> no! I also have a knife. Sorry, oh, I forgot thank God. that brain Oh, fart. thank God. Oh, 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 I can rest easy knowing that Mark is at... He at least has a way of protecting himself out there. I hope you can rest <laughs> easy knowing I have a way to protect myself. <laughs> Whoa, it's almost like he knew. <laughs> I know you so well. It's almost like I knew you would be able to rest easy. Anywho, I gotta go. I will miss your warm embrace. Tell Harrison I love him. I did not write a letter for him. Oh, Wait, does this mean that if I got a letter and Harrison didn't? Ooh, this is... You know, I, I can't let Harrison know. It'll, it'll destroy him. P.S. Please let Harrison know he is my favorite. I wanted to write a letter to you as consolation. Oh. Well. Whoop, whoop. Anyway, that was my letter. Anyway, Harrison, Mark wrote a letter. I, I heard. It was very heartwarming, Mark. Yeah, he said, I'm his favorite. He said, I'm his favorite because he wrote me the letter and not you. Anyway. And he said, he said not to tell you about the letter, but I'm telling you about the letter because I care about our friendship so much. I'm like that Mark guy. I mean, fuck him. <laughs> anyway, Eric starts voicing his concerns about Millie, but then she walks in having prepared breakfast for Jack. Yes. Um, and she says maybe her second kind of concerning line of the episode, which is when she finds out that they're going to go for a run. She says, but Jack, I planned the rest of your life. I mean, day. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Um, Guys, I'm starting to think that DJ is a bit of a stalker, like a crazy obsessed stalker vampire. I am seeing some red flags. Red like the blood that a vampire sucks? Ooh, I'm, I'm, I'm coming. Is this, Zach's this gonna is, figure this out. Zach's cracking this case wide open. <laughs> she's mean and she's pale, so that means she's a vampire. Definitely. Yes! Yes, the they listen. Listen, Mark. Mark. The episode is called "The Witches of Pembroke." It's an obvious mystery act. Of course, I just, I just wanted to point out to everyone that like the premise of Boy Meets World is just like I don't know, a boy is growing up, coming of age. Like it's not supernatural at all. Zach is just and also going vampires. Here. Also vampires, maybe, maybe, uh, maybe. 
Anyway, this scene is where Sean enters the episode. I think this is where I made a note because I said, hey, uh, this is the best friend of the main character. We're only getting like those characters now. Um, And this is the beginning of Sean's thing in this episode where he's just kind of vibing and here for anything. Oh, I love Sean in this episode. He's wonderful. He's just kind of vibing. I also remember I I quickly looked at IMDb. He made them Rocky hats. Yeah, go ahead. I quickly looked at IMDb trivia before this, and I believe this is one of three episodes in the entire show in which Sean and Corey, the actual main character of this show, who has not appeared in this episode yet, uh, don't have any scenes together. The entire oh. episode. We we picked a good sample episode to watch. This yeah. is definitely indicative of what the show is. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. But yeah, Sean's just kind of vibing. He made them Rocky hats, and Eric's like, well, yeah, I'll take one because I'm going, but Jack's not going to go because Jack wants to... To hang out with his girlfriend. Oh, <laughs> wow, Jack. What the hell, man? Bros before hoes, And he says man. that. Bros before hoes. Yep. Um, <laughs> this is also when we find out that DJ is really into the balcony of their apartment. Yeah. I mean, for some reason. that's how you always get the ladies. That's, yep. that's what my girlfriend said the first time she saw my apartment. She was like, oh, wow. I wasn't sure about this. But then I saw his balcony. And oh my yeah, god, I, mean, I knew I had to stay for life. Hey, the ladies love it when you got a big balcony <laughs> I, I, in my I'd right, I'd like to fellas. mention something really funny. Um, <laughs> so, uh, my roommate's name is also Jack, and he just sent me a text of like that after me screaming that entire thing. He's like, dude, what the hell? I'm not dating anyone. Why are you screaming about this? <laughs> uh, I would like to point out this is not about my roommate. Uh, this is in fact about a fictional character. I'm yelling so that you can hear across the wall. You could also send a text. I could. I could. I, I totally could. Uh, uh, but things are, are getting serious because Jack also made her a set of keys. Uh, they've been dating for like a day, I think. Yeah. <laughs> what the heck? Is this supposed to be happening, happening over a span of months? Yep. Like... This episode moves so quickly. Yeah. It's kind of wonderful, especially after watching Fuller House. Yeah. So she's already moving in. And she much. has her third line that, like, this one's maybe less creepy than the others, but I want to put it out to you. How creepy do you think this is? She says, um, Jack belongs to me now. How, what do you think of that line? Totally normal. Yeah, yep. classic second date, you know. Exactly. You know, things are getting really serious. I mean, it's really the mark of any good relationship. You know, if things are getting intimate and the girl's like, ooh, show me your balcony, it's when you know. I mean, you can't bring out the balcony on the first date. You know, you can't be you can't be that easy. Well, I, I meant specifically saying someone belongs well, that's to you. Well, that's what you say on the balcony. Yeah. That's what you say on the balcony. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it goes hand in hand with the balcony, and that's like solid second date territory. Yeah. You bring them out on the balcony, you say, you belong to me now, and then you grab them by the shoulders and hold them over the edge and say, and if you try to leave me, I swear I'll... And that's, uh, that's... And then you suck their blood like a vampire. I just wanted to yeah. say it was really weird. I had this date with this girl, and I had her back to my apartment, and I showed her my balcony, and she didn't, like, have a reaction. Really? I showed you my balcony. Please respond. Wow. Yeah, she didn't seem to like like she didn't have a negative reaction, but just like no reaction either way. And like wow. she wanted to talk about more things. And I was like, no, but the balcony. So stuck up. Not, <laughs> not appreciating the balcony. She must think she has like the best balcony. <laughs> yeah, that was the pro <laughs> she was so she was so caught up in her own balcony. Like we really hit it off and like maybe I love her, but you're you're right. I like I should just cut her out of my life because like yeah, I mean... Some people are just too stuck up about their own balconies. Exactly. <laughs> if you can't appreciate a good balcony other than your own, then, like, you really gotta evaluate your life choices. You need to... You're, maybe you're not ready for a relationship. You need to spend some time yes, working exactly. on yourself, you know? You gotta spend time working on yourself and your relationship with balconies. <laughs> and then... And then maybe we'll be ready for a second date. Just... Anyway, the next scene happens. <laughs> um... Where we finally meet up with our main character. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Corey and Topanga are going to Pittsburgh. Um, and she thinks they're going to drive, but he reveals he actually got them tickets for a plane and they're going to fly. Mm -hmm. And 
Turns out she's afraid of flying. What do you know? There are some good lines here where she says, you know, I'm morally opposed to it. And goes, flying? She says, oh, I thought you said hunting whales. <laughs> that was good. I mean, I, I always get those confused. Yeah. I mean, like, there have been a couple times where, like, I've showed up to the airport with, like, my harpoon. And then, like, TS, and then that's, like, a whole thing at TSA. It's like, mm, you can't bring your yeah. harpoon on the plane. I'm like, I'm sorry. I thought we were hunting whales. I can't tell you how many times... I've tried to go on vacation and then like halfway through the day realized, oh, I just shot a whale. (laughs) It's silly me. I meant to go on an airplane, but instead I killed a creature. (laughs) With a harpoon. With a harpoon. Yeah. Just like sometimes you just like blank out. And that happens. Yeah, I mean, you can't really blame him for that. It's like, mm, it happens. But that's really, that's what this scene happened. I, I just, I think it's funny how far we get into this episode without checking in with our main characters. Yeah. But the next scene is where this episode takes a real turn. Yes. Oh boy. Real, real big turn. Because if you thought Candace Cameron Bure was playing a mean, possessive girlfriend... You were wrong. We cut to her on the balcony as she beseeches the Lord of Darkness. Like a vampire. Guys, turns out DJ is an evil witch. Whoa! Like a a vampire. Not not a vampire, but a witch. You see, this is where I reveal my elaborate ruse to the viewers that this entire vampire thing was a misdirect because she's a witch. (laughs) I I got you. That whole which is a Pembroke thing being a misdirect. It's not. It's what it's the title of the episode, you dummy. This is also where I reveal that my whole thing of guys, this show doesn't have any supernatural elements was actually about this, not Zach's thing about vampires. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, DJ's a witch now. We we want we wanted to save that reveal for you because that it was this is the moment where I decided, oh, we have to watch this for the podcast. Yes. Yeah, that was fantastic. Oh, yeah. I knew Candace Cameron Bure was in it because, like I said, it really is. When I was first watching it, that really was the thought process. I thought, you know, the title is a play on an existing thing. I thought it was like witches, like she's a mean lady. And it's just this mean new girl starts dating uh Jack and she comes between these two friends. Nope. Turns out she's a literal witch. Yeah. <laughs> Turns yeah. out uh, the witches of Pembroke, they took that literally. Yep. Pretty literal. Yeah. Um, quite a time. I mean, I hate it when that happens, you know? Yep. Keep in mind, uh, Jack confronts, I'm going to say DJ, but her name is Millie, about yep. being a witch. Like, what is it? Like eight to nine minutes into the episode? <laughs> eight to nine minutes into the episode. We're already no, no, this is ju- just about eight minutes into this, the episode. Later, yeah. he confronts her. Okay. No, it well, yeah, confronts wait, Eric confronts. Did I say? I, I might have said Jack earlier. Eric oh, yeah, no, Eric. Her. This is eight minutes in. Eric confronts um, yeah, her. Yeah, Eric confronts yeah. her. Well, he walks in after she gives this whole speech to the Lord of Darkness. <laughs> um, and it's great because she says, How much of that did, did you hear? And he says, I heard you talking to Satan. <laughs> <laughs> Will Friedle is so good in this episode. Oh, yeah. oh it's, he's wonderful. Just so good in general. I, um, if it hasn't come up on the podcast before, I really love Kim Possible. Mm. And w- Eric Matthews does have some good Ron Stoppable energy. <laughs> mm. He does. He really yeah. does, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he goes up to Millie and he's like, you're a witch. I knew it. You're a witch. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Which I, who had not seen this episode, asked Mark if this episode would end with Candace Cameron Bure being burned at the stake. Uh, and I'm just going to leave you in suspense in that one until we actually get to the ending of the episode. Because maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. The answer will we know surprise you, you. Click on our article to find out more. Number five will surprise you. <laughs> Jack com- <laughs> Jack comes out, Millie slaps Eric and says that he tried to kiss her. And Eric has the perfect response to that, which is, I didn't try to kiss her. To kiss her. I think she's a witch. Yeah. <laughs> Eight minutes oh. into the episode, yes, we have the line, I think she's a witch. Yes. No, and it's not even like casually brought up. It's like screamed. He's like, I think yeah. she's a witch. Yep. 
It's fantastic. I tr- she's saying I tried to kiss her. That's crazy. She is a real actual <laughs> witch. <laughs> no, 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 no. Look, she didn't try to kiss me. I can explain. Jack, your girlfriend is a witch. <laughs> so, amazingly, Jack doesn't believe this. And and Eric says, you have to choose between her and me. <laughs> Despite the fact that Eric was very persuasive with that whole witch thing. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, come on. Why wouldn't you believe that? That's like, that happens all the time. Like, be op- more open-minded, Jack. But no, Jack decides he wants his witch girlfriend. Yeah. He chooses He chooses his girlfriend, whom he kisses, <laughs> instead of his roommate. Who he doesn't It's not kiss. shown that they kiss. There actually are, before I watched this episode, I saw, there are a lot of, like, um, Jack and Eric being a gay couple compilations on YouTube. Oh, really? Oh, <laughs> wonderful. Yeah. You nice. know, a lot of that subtext thing. Um, yeah. I think there's a moment in this episode where he calls Jack, where Eric calls Jack sweetie. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, um, also, um, we find out Millie is moving in. Yes. Jack already. chooses Millie, and also Eric does not re- it does not register with Eric. Yes, this girl who he has known for two days, she came to his balcony, now she's got the keys to his apartment, and she's moving in. Oh, boy. She also, there's a line where Eric says, where she's going to sleep, her precious balcony, and Jack says, yes, actually. <laughs> because as we know, girls love balconies. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's really, like, my main shortcoming in college has been I have not lived in a building that has a balcony and I think that's why I'm single. Yep. But Eric goes off because he he's not welcome in his own apartment and Jack um says to Sean this is a very good moment. Jack says to Sean like can you believe it he thinks Millie is a witch and Sean's response is she's not a witch. <laughs> <laughs> I thought she was that's what everybody is saying. Sean is just that. here. Sean is here to vibe and and just groovy with anything. I love the magical realist implication that people just know she's a witch and they're like, yep. Yeah, yeah she's yep. the she's the Champus witch. You didn't know about her? Yep. Jack <laughs> decides to take this into his own hands. He asks her, Are you a witch? To which she responds, I am. I am a witch. <laughs> yeah, she very quickly tells him that she's a witch. Yeah. And we should respond we we should say at this point, like Wicca are real. Like, Wicca, there are people who practice yeah. witchcraft. Right. But, like, yeah, she's a real actual witch. Yeah. <laughs> who who worships Satan and everything. And who uses magic. Yep. As lightning strikes and, you know, thunders and whatever happen yeah. when she recites her satanic incantations. Yes. She she sort of brainwashes Jack into coming to a Halloween party they're going to throw. By the way, nine minutes in, we find out this is a Halloween episode. Yeah, that's <laughs> I'd like to point out we are we are 35 minutes into recording and we are nine minutes into the episode. <laughs> Maybe it didn't start as a Halloween. To episode. be fair, like I think the episodes, what, 22 minutes and our record our episodes of the podcast are like an hour. So that's not so bad. You know what? That's yeah. fair. That's fair. Yeah, I just, it's funny to me that they don't front load it at, at, the, at the same time they drop on you. This is a Halloween episode and you're like, oh, okay. Also, there are witches. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you're like, got it. But she brainwashes Jack. And then we go back to Corey and Topanga, our B plot. Yeah. yeah, they're getting on a plane. A very, a very small, small plane. <laughs> a very small, uncomfortable, possibly illegal plane. Yep. <laughs> It's like a personal plane. It's just them and the pilot. Yep. And Topanga's very scared because she's never been on a plane before. And Corey's like, oh, look at this fucking nerd who's never been on a plane before. Yeah. One, Corey is very insensitive. He's making fun of her a lot. Yeah. And two, um, yeah, she's never been on a plane before. And her first flight is on the worst plane. Yes. He admits that he got the tickets for $12, which is a steal considering the the airline just got out of bankruptcy. Yep. <laughs> which, you know, which he may be joking, airline. but also I wouldn't put it past them. This show has witches. Yeah. <laughs> That's maybe the thing. Anytime anything skirts believability, you can be like, what? This show has witches. Yeah. Fuller House has Santa Claus. Anything's possible. <laughs> well, Full House has Santa Claus. But oh, that's in the same universe as Fuller House. That's true. Fuller House also has doppelgangers of every single character. Yes. 
Presumably. Um, but also they meet the pilot um, who recognizes Corey's name because he went to school with Eric Matthews and he tells Corey, your brother's a really smart guy. <laughs> You know, oh, I wish I was as smart as your brother, Eric Matthews, who we've known for the rest of the And at this point, I paused it and I said, Eric is the one who is fighting witches just because I needed you to understand the gravity of the statement. Yeah, your brother's a really smart guy coming from your yeah. pilot. Yeah. <laughs> um, which it's a very good thing. It's one of those things I think we mentioned recently, like there's an episode of Fuller House where Kimmy says to Steph, oh, we should spend the day together. And that's not a big ask coming from like anybody in particular, but coming from Kimmy Gibbler, you're like, <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. yeah. So I love when a show can use its own characters as implication and stake and context mm -hmm. that it can be like, yeah, I knew your brother's smart guy. And you understand what that means. Yeah. Like yeah. That. But Eric goes to Mr. Feeney, good old Mr. Feeney. <laughs> Who is talking to trick-or-treaters. He's extorting them. Apparently, they did not say trick-or-treat because yes. he's holding the candy away from them and saying, say it or you don't get candy. He's critiquing their trick-or-treat etiquette by, like, holding the candy up really high into the air because then the small children won't be able to grab yes. it. <laughs> Which, by the way, what, what small children go up to someone's door on Halloween and they're trick-or-treating and they don't say trick-or-treat? Yeah, that's what I, I don't know. Right? That's like 50% of the fun. Mm -hmm. He makes them say trick-or-treat and then he makes them say once more with emotion this time. <laughs> that's maybe a little much. And then he gives them all pocket thesauruses. Thesauri? Yep. Is there a plural for thesaurus? I'm going to go with thesauri because that sounds fun. Yeah, let's say Thesauri. And then I think he also does give them candy. He does after give that. them but candy. Yeah, he, as has, well, yeah. he has, I just, I guess just a lot of pocket thesauruses. Yeah, I mean, look, they were having like a bulk deal. It was like a hundred for the price of one. You gotta get rid of these pocket thesauri. But Eric comes to him, not asking for advice, but asking, can I stay with you for the night? <laughs> hmm. um, which feels like a weird thing to just ask. Um, your teacher your teacher slash this old man you know yeah which mr Feeney's immediate response is um no <laughs> <laughs> uh is something going on um or eric also explains ah, it's the same old story your roommate starts dating this girl she's a witch she worships satan she wants <laughs> it's great yeah you know boy meets girl tur girl turns out to be a witch girl turns out to sacrifice boy. Yep. Now boy is dead. <laughs> now boy dead. Dead boy. Boy didn't meet world. Boy met. Boy met death. death. <laughs> boy meets death. Boy meets is death. Is that going to be our spinoff? <laughs> boy, boy, boy meets death. Boy meets oh, death. No. oh no. <laughs> oh no. Corey Matthews at the end of his life. It's like an entire, no, I was thinking it's like an entire like how I met your mother type series. It's like this is about how I died. <laughs> oh God. Oof. And all the sitcom shenanigans that lead up to a... Like... In the middle of the last season, there's an episode called How Death Met Me, and then, like, it shows <laughs> the story of death, like the Grim Reaper, and it just shows how, <laughs> like, his dating life in New York City and how he finds Corey Matthews. <laughs> I mean, I'd imagine the dating scene is very hard for the yeah, Grim Reaper. Because yeah. he could not stop for death. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you can never really get intimate with somebody if you're the Grim Reaper. Right. It, it is a sitcom episode, but it is, it is based on Because I Could Not Stop for Death by Emily yes. Dickinson. Yes, yes. But I mean, like, and I, I don't know for sure about this, but I don't think the Grim Reaper has a balcony of any sort. Mm. So that's like two things going against them. These are, we're asking the big questions. Are there balconies in hell? I mean, it's underground, so there is no practical function for it, but... It's hell, so I'd imagine no. Mm. Um, but, you know, Eric says, I thought we were friends and now he's ditching me. But I guess we're just roommates. And Mr. Feeney says, like, if you were just roommates, you wouldn't be here. Like, you do really care about him. Go to him. And uh, <laughs> usually we make fun of, like, Fuller House for resolving things very easily. Yeah. But Eric fully goes, like, wow, you didn't even bring a sweat on that one. <laughs> yeah. She's like, well, I guess that's taken care of. We cut back to Topanga and Corey. No, but actually, he sits down and gets a phone call yes, from Corey, right. who is somehow calling him from a plane. Yep. I don't know how that works, but uh, 
he Corey calls Mr. Feeney and he's like, hey, do you know this guy? I forget his name. I don't know if he wrote it down, Mark. Yeah. I did not. Okay. I'm just gonna say, like, I know this guy. Um we're gonna we're just gonna call him Jackson Fuller. Uh <laughs> I don't you know, we've never really we we don't know a character by this name yet, but this sounds like the kind of yeah, guy. Yeah, Jackson Fuller not yeah. taken. Um, yeah. Do you? What are his yeah. school records? He asks for his school records, and Mr. Feeney says, "I can't do that. I'm a teacher. Why do you need that?" And he goes, "He's my pilot." And Mr. Feeney immediately goes, "Dear God, do not get on that plane." <laughs> <laughs> it's so good. Uh, to which Corey's like, "Well, I've had a good life. Too late. <laughs> had a good life." Saw a lot of balconies. <laughs> this is how Boy Meets Death ends. <laughs> yep. I love that this is pretty much where the subplot ends. Like, there's one more scene, but it's just, yep, he just has a shitty flight because the pilot... Yeah. <laughs> well, he, he, go, he goes up to the front and it turns out Topanga isn't afraid of flying anymore because she is flying the plane. Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> she's never so been good. in a plane before and now she's flying the plane. <laughs> And that's how that plot ends. Yeah. We do not see them land. We do not see them for the rest of the episode, for that matter. We don't even know if they're okay, except for the fact that the next episode and they're all fine. In a very Fuller House way, it doesn't have a lot of closure. <laughs> yeah. But uh, anyways, it's Halloween, and they're having a big Halloween party in Eric and Jack's apartment. And it's witch-themed. Yep. I wrote down, the witches are flailing and wearing shrouds. Yes, they're wearing shrouds, they're waving their arms in the air and going, ooh, ooh, I'm a spooky witch. And Sean's getting really into it. Sean is super into it. It's He's great. just vibing. I Every love Every once Sean in a while, he episode. just stops and goes, I love Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, hey, you with the shroud. Oh, it's a, <laughs> it's hey. like a whole bit where it's like someone knocks the door and is like, yeah. hey, you with the shroud, go get it. What? Oh, it's what so quirky. We're wearing shrouds, you guys. <laughs> and they... they <laughs> Oh, well, DJ answers the door and it's a bunch of trick-or-treaters and she's like, oh, some candy for the princess, a candy for the mermaid, the, frog, the mermaid. I don't know why I said frog. Uh, and then there's a girl who's dressed as a witch and, she, and she's like, you don't get any candy because you mock well, us. Actually, what she says is you don't get any candy because you mock us. Yes, she does a voice. She, she starts voice. using yeah. a couple times a full exorcist voice. Yes. Which yeah. is an interesting route to go, to say the can least. I Can I make a controversial statement? Yeah, go for it. Candice Cameron Bure is very good in this episode. Very good. Yes, we've learned that Candice Cameron Bure can be good in things. Yes. <laughs> she honestly, I guess, DJ's character is, is she. I guess she plays DJ well enough. Sometimes I do enjoy yeah, yeah. DJ's character as the most mom. Yeah, she's not given a lot to work with, but she yep. does what she can. She's she she makes a pretty good evil witch. Yeah. Yeah. I uh, also cultures are not costumes. Can I cultures cannot are not appropriate costumes. witch culture? Yep. One hundred percent. Yeah, I mean, I don't know how many times I've had to go to like a college Halloween party and see someone dressed up as a rabbi and be like, "Bro, no, <laughs> we, <laughs> my culture oh is not your costume. Oh you can't be a rabbi on Halloween." <laughs> we have to be more respectful of witches. Anyway, the witches tie up Jack and Sean to the balcony. <laughs> um, yes. Jack says, "Hey, Millie, I think we should break up," and she says, "I am not Millie. I am Ushkar, queen of malevolence, daughter of evil." Oh my god! And I think she—I think it goes on even longer. Oh, it's um, beautiful. And then they do the very good thing of Jack says, um, "Okay, Ushkar, I think we should break up." <laughs> <laughs> that was very good. Anyway, they're gonna sacrifice Jack and Sean to gain immortality. Yay! Yes, <laughs> they're gonna shoot them with the crystal of death, which they have, <laughs> <laughs> which they have, and they have set up on the balcony. Yep, <laughs> they just have a crystal of death. Do they sell satanic crystals of death at the sacred cow store? It does fall. <laughs> We'd have to ask name. Toby about I'll, that. I'll one. shoot. I'll shoot Toby a text. All right, and let us know when he gets back to you. Oh, okay. oh he got. Oh. Well, you know what they say about Toby. He's a very quick texter. He's very. That's, that's what I say about Toby all the time. <laughs> yeah, that's really the one thing you need to know. But uh, yeah, they're going to sacrifice him them with the crystal of death. Which they just have. They just have it. Yeah, for it was foretold that a hunter will be sacrificed. So they're going to sacrifice 
two hunters, Yay. I guess to gain extra immortality. <laughs> <laughs> immortality Just to make plus. Sure, yeah, you know, well, guys, would you rather be immortal or more immortal? Immortal or like mega immortal? Super immortal. <laughs> but yeah. By the way, their last name is Hunter. That's why. Yes. It's like a pun. They're, they're Jack and Sean Hunter. Yes. And then Eric, who is also here and also in a shroud, is like, how about two hunters? And uh, Matthews, I'm here to save you from Which, dying. He was apparently there for a while. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Like, you, you could have come out at any time. I mean, I guess maybe he just got here, but yeah, he was wearing a shroud, and he's like, how about this? <laughs> like, you could have come out at any time. Um, he shows up, he tells them he found a certain book, Bridges of Madison County, <laughs> but also another book. Called Witchcraft for Dum-Dums. Witchcraft for Dum-Dums. <laughs> yeah. Um, and legally distinct witchcraft for Dum-Dums. And through Witchcraft <laughs> for Dum-Dums, he has found a counterspell. Because, of course, that's definitely how witchcraft for dum-dums would work. It would definitely yes. have the correct form of witchcraft. Yeah. There's a counterspell, <laughs> but as it turns out, he's too late, and the death crystal's gonna fire a laser, and it hits Eric, and he doesn't die. Yeah, a little weird. And and DJs are like, what? That's impossible. The the la the death laser hit you. You how are you alive? You should be dead because the death laser hit you. We we planned this perfectly. To which Eric is like, yeah, about that. I'm wearing sunscreen, which apparently reflects death yep. lasers. SPF whatever sounds. I didn't write down what SPF, SPF it was. It wasn't something. even that high in SPF. It was like SPF forty. Yeah, it was like SPF 40 sunscreen. Apparently the death laser is just like a really strong UV light. Count <laughs> sunscreen was the greatest counter spell of all. And then yeah. he says what it may quite possibly be the line of the episode. Oh, yep. Which is, <laughs> so he's like, yeah, I got sunscreen on my back. Not today, Satan. <laughs> I think I think it's literally maybe next time, Satan. Maybe next time. Yeah, it's maybe next time, Satan. The delivery. And, and so he says good. it in the best possible way. He's just like, maybe next time, Satan. <laughs> it's so good. It's, like, it's a weird mix of like super casual and like an epic voice. Guys, Eric Matthews is my hero. He's wonderful. He fought off Satan. He did. He fought off Satan. How many guys do you know who can say that they fought off Satan? That's... I would use that as every icebreaker. One time I stopped Satan from killing people. Yeah. Hi, uh, my name's Eric Matthews. Uh, and one time I fought off Satan. Anyway, um, he rescues them. He and Jack have a really good moment where they're like, we are, we are friends. And you, you're, you're important to me. And it's really good because even when... It's the sort of thing of, like, even when Fuller House has endings, they often don't have that, like, final emotional beat between two characters. Uh, yeah. But they, they have this final emotional beat between two characters to wrap up the emotional through line of the episode, which yeah. is good. And then they leave to go to another party, another Halloween party. And Sean and is still tied Sean up. And Sean tied up, yeah. <laughs> and he but just yeah. goes, I just love Halloween. He's still here for it. It's great. Yeah, he's, Sean is great. Sean is vibing this entire episode, and we love him for it. And that's how... That's, that's how, how the main episode ends. The main episode ends. And then over credits, there is um, a little, little, little button where Eric is now dating this girl. He's taking her out to the balcony, and he's like, I have... I have some experiences with this balcony and it's a little weird. I, I'll just come out and say it. My, my friend was dating a witch and then it turns out the girl who Eric is dating is Sabrina, the teenage witch it's herself. So good. <laughs> Melissa it's John very Hart. Good. It's, it's very, very, good. very good. That cameo just out of nowhere. It's perfect. That was, that was when I was first watching it. Um, when they first revealed DJ is a witch, that's when I went, well, we have to watch this episode. And that's and then Sabrina, the teenage witch showing up was when I went, OK, we definitely have to watch this episode. <laughs> <laughs> and the character is it's still Sabrina, the teenage witch. Like she, he calls yeah. her Sabrina. Yep. Yeah. And she says, like, what's so wrong about witchcraft? <laughs> <laughs> and then she turns someone into a frog. Sean is, yeah, a, Sean frog, is a frog, but Sean he is, is just here a for it in keeping with Sean. Yeah. <laughs> Sean is just a he's just a frog now. And it looks so weird. No, yep. it's, it's, so, a, it's, it's this, this really weird round effect. puppet. 
Yeah. yeah. It's like, it just looks so unnerving. And I was like, okay, Sean's this weird looking frog now. And mm. then the episode ends. It's great. So is it, is so it time? Good. I think it's is time. It time. It's time to bring back one of our favorite segments. And we're bringing back another segment that we've only done once before. It's in conjunction, Sad Boy of the Week. And because it's a Halloween themed episode, Spooky Boy of the Week. We're bringing it back as well, but we're also combining it. So we're, we're combining because we did it last time as well. It just kind of worked out that way. We're going to find the boy who is Who's the saddest and, and also the, the spookiest. spookiest. There's an extra layer of the decision. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I would like to nominate Sean. <laughs> I was going to say there's Sean. I was, yeah, Sean. I'm also going to nominate Eric. Yeah, also Eric. Eric. <laughs> yep. Uh... <laughs> it's funny i'm just running through it and i'm kind of like every character in a, in a I was way gonna say, like, yeah like pretty much like every character jack. is in I think contention you could do millie. i was and gonna I say do, jack i think you could argue millie <laughs> and i do have one more nominee that i think is maybe a bit of a dark horse Jackson or maybe Fuller. the ultimate dark horse <laughs> satan <laughs> Oh my god. I I I kinda wanna give it to Satan based on that alone, but run through the cases. I didn't think of it we'll that through. way. That's oh. wonderful. That's so good. I Where love should it. I start? I'll start with Eric. Eric Okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um Eric tries to teach his roommate how to pick up girls. He is completely unaware that his loving them with his eyes technique is one super creepy two doesn't work three i guess this is related to super creepy um led to them having to have campus escorts Mm -hmm. he immediately strikes out with dj who passes him up for his roommate his roommate who he's like oh jack he can't get girls and then he immediately gets the girl yep um he goes to the club but it turns out they turned it into a starbucks Yes, that is a detail we forgot to bring up that, earlier. That's a detail yeah, we did not bring up. The club is a Starbucks. And then he takes off his pants. He takes off his pants immediately. He talks to his roommate Smooch Buddy, which is what how I refer to romantic partners as Smooch Buddies. Also, the smiley face underwear is a thing that I feel like we should mention. He's got like the boxes with a bunch of smiley faces on them. You, you interrupted me. I was going to say he talks to his roommate Smooch Buddy in his underwear. Yeah, I was going to bring up specifically the smiley face part. So. Smiley face underwear, yep. I think it's an important detail that needs to be brought up. Yep. I apologize yeah. for interrupting, but No, no, on. it's fine. Um, uh, His roommate's new girlfriend immediately threatens him. Uh, He's been planning, they've been stretching. <laughs> he's been planning this run for a while, and they've been stretching for it for months. Yes. <laughs> They're only now limber enough to walk up steps. <laughs> <laughs> no, not walk, yeah. run. Run upstairs. Run upstairs. Important yep. distinction. Uh, his roommate won't believe him about his evil witch girlfriend. That's a lot of it. He keeps trying to. He keeps trying to calmly explain your girlfriend's an evil witch. He fights witchcraft, which is very cool, but he fights it in maybe the saddest way. Of he buys witchcraft for dum dums and puts on a lot of sunscreen. Yeah. Um, and then after this whole Michigas with dating a witch he starts dating a witch <laughs> there's sean mm-hmm. who i guess the first thing sean does he makes he makes rocky hats for his brother and his <laughs> friend yes what a thing Wonderful. to do I'm all, not all of these things are sad but i'm just running through everything that's yeah. funny to me <laughs> um he uh, is gleefully hanging out with a bunch of evil witches yeah. <laughs> um he yeah. gleefully participates in the evil witch ceremony. Ooh. <laughs> Guys, we're all wearing shrouds. Isn't that great? Yeah. He's perfectly fine with death. Yep. He's tied up to the balcony to be sacrificed and he still participates. They start wailing again. And he goes, Ooh, and Jack's like, Sean, what the hell? And he's like, I don't know, I got into it. <laughs> <laughs> um uh, he's left tied to the balcony, but he's still super into it <laughs> and finally he's turned into a frog <laughs> still super yeah, he's just into randomly it. a frog still super into it he's just randomly a frog for yep. no reason oh my God. 
Yep. Um, Jack, Jack is new to the city. He doesn't know many people. He's all alone. He's not confident. Then he starts dating this really pale girl. Um, who it turns out is a witch. Not uh, a she vampire. Drive, she's Important a witch. She's not a vampire. Important distinction. Uh, she drives a wedge between him and his best friend. To be fair to her, she's very upfront about being a witch. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's a pro. A con is she tries to sacrifice him. It's a pretty big con. Yep. So he ends up almost sacrificed and without a girlfriend, but he does have his best friend, Eric Matthews. And Millie, I think the biggest thing is, uh, one, she has to put up with Eric for a long time. (laughs) Uh, She goes through this whole plan to sacrifice Jack to gain immortality. And then in the end, it doesn't work. Yeah, she waited a thousand years. Her crystal isn't as strong as sunscreen. And Satan, it's related. (laughs) Satan's power can be defeated. With sunblock? With <laughs> SPF 40 sunblock? You got outsmarted by Eric Matthews and Satan sunblock. Satan gets outsmart. Satan and Millie both get outsmarted by Eric Matthews. Uh, I, okay. I came into this segment fully expecting to give it to Sean, but now I kind of want to say Satan because I think it would be hilarious. I kind of want to say Satan. Are we, are we all in agreement that we're going to be Satan? I was in between like Sean, Eric... And maybe say, I mean, I think maybe Millie deserves it more than Satan, but I think we should give it to Satan. <laughs> I mean, you're the lo- I mean, you're both the spookiest boy and the saddest boy. Satan is the spookiest boy. You don't get much spookier than Satan himself. Yeah. S- S- Satan is the spookiest boy. He flubs it up pretty hard this episode. <laughs> and and when else are we going to have an opportunity to give it to Satan? Never. There will never be an opportunity to I mean, do Satan. Listen, I, I'm not going to rule out Satan making an appearance in Fuller House. I just don't think it's likely. <laughs> it could happen. It, it could happen, but I think... We I still think, got two seasons left Put it on the shit. books. The sad boy and spooky boy of the week is is Satan himself. Is Satan Lucifer oh, sorry, himself. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Satan themself. Um, <laughs> Satan himself. I don't know oh what pronoun Satan uses. That's oh right. You gotta God. ask. You gotta ask. Um, but yeah, he he whiffs it pretty hard this episode. Yeah. Satan does. Yeah. No, I I I'm totally fine with this. Yeah. But I think that's it, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I, I just want to remind everyone, or ask again, please, um, follow us on social media. We are at Fullest House Pod on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We put out new episodes every week. Um, I hope everybody listening has a wonderful day. I'm Mark Green. Uh, I'm Harrison Bloom. And I'm Zach Horowitz. And until next time, may your houses be fuller, and maybe next time, Satan. Maybe you'll get him next time. (laughs) 